Hello Sharks, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com and today we're going to address one of the fundamental building blocks that you must understand if you want to have any success at poker. You have to understand both equity and pot odds. This is something that I know a lot of you already know, but realize a lot of people do not. I get emails all the time where people make it clear they do not understand equity and pot odds. So if these two terms are unfamiliar to you, I'm going to make it really, really clear today what they mean and how to use them in poker. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say you raise to 2.2 big blinds out of your 16 big blind effective stack in a shallow stack poker tournament or a shallow stack cash game for middle position, and then a tight player in the big blind goes all in with this range. If you're unfamiliar with ranges, make sure you check out my video that I recently posted on YouTube about hand ranges. In this scenario, when your opponent goes all in, you think they have a pretty tight range because they're a tight player, and you don't know what they have. You can't put them on ace-king because they could easily play aces the same way or tens the same way or ace-jack suited the same way. But let's presume you know they're really tight, and this is what you estimate their all-in range to be. Okay? If you have this information here, you can figure out precisely which hands you should call their all-in with. How do you do that? Well, first, you have to figure out your pot odds. In this scenario, you want to ask, how much more do I have to call? And that is 13.8 big blinds. Why 13.8 big blinds? Because we already put in 2.2, and the opponent went all in for 16 total. 16 minus 2.2 is 13.8. So we need to know that number, how much more we have to call, and then we need to know how big the pot will be total. The total pot will be 33.5 big blinds, which is our opponent's 16, our 16, after we call, that does get added to the pot, plus the ante and the small blind. We would also add the big blind if the opponent was not in the big blind, but they're in the big blind this time. So this is 16 times 2 plus 0.5 plus 1, which is 33.5, okay? So in this scenario, our, our pot odds are the amount we have to call, 13.8, divided by the total pot, which is 33.5, which equals 41.2%, okay? Once we have this number, all we have to do now is figure out which hands have more than 41.2% equity against our opponent's range. You may say, how in the world are you supposed to figure that out? Well, you can use a free po program called Equalab to figure this out. You can just search Equalab on Google. It'll come right up. Here it is. What you want to do is you want to type in your opponent's range into Equalab. So here is the opponent's range. It's tens and better, ace jack suited and better, ace queen off suited and better, and king queen suited. So you can click right here, give your opponent tens and better, ace jack suited and better, ace queen off suit and better, and king queen suited. Click apply. And now you just have to find hands that have 41.2% equity that we decided. Uh, yeah, 41.2% equity or more. So um, they actually have a feature called the hand range calculator, but for some reason it's not working on my computer. I'm traveling and my computer's not working right. You could use that program, but if you want to do this the old-fashioned way, you can go through and type in various hands and see if they have 41.2% equity against this range. So let's take a look at ace-jack suited. Nowhere near good enough. 35%. Way in the dumps, right? So this would be a fold. If ace-jack suit is a fold, it implies ace-jack offsuit is a fold because ace-jack offsuit is worse than ace-jack suited. As you see, ace-jack offsuit has 30% equity, so it's way worse. What about a hand like um, pocket nines? Clearly worse than all the pairs, but flipping with all the over cards. You see there, it has 39% equity, not quite good enough. You're going to find that if someone's really tight and they have only good pairs and only good strong high cards, your pairs that are worse than the lowest pair that they're going to shove is usually not quite good enough. 39 is less than 41.2, so it's a fold. What about if we add pocket tens? That is close, 42%, and probably good enough to call. Now, if you are playing a poker tournament, you always want to have a little bit more equity than the break-even percentage. So instead of 41.2, maybe you want to have 42. 
to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room and uh, take into account the various payout implications. Sometimes there are going to be bigger payout implications if you are on a bubble, but that's not what we're discussing today. We're discussing just straight figuring out your equity and pot odds and making correct calls because of it. But that per should perhaps be accounted for. So maybe you want to have like 42% equity, but 10 still satisfies that. What about ace-queen offsuit? Ace-queen offsuit has 38% equity. Not good enough. What about ace-queen suited? 41.7. Barely good enough. Ace-king offsuit is going to be good enough. Pretty obviously. And the reason I say obviously is because ace-king offsuit, notice, dominates a large chunk of your opponent's range. You're flipping against queen, kings, queens, and jacks, so those don't really matter because it's 50%, right? 50 is way more than 42, and you're dominating some of their hands. But notice ace-queen offsuit here is a fold, right? Because you're only dominating two hands, and those are the suited hands, which don't have very many combinations, right? So in this scenario, we should call with pocket tens or better, right? Because that has more than 41.2. And we should call with ace-queen. Is ace-queen offsuit a call? No, still not a call. We should call with ace-queen suited and better. And that's it. Pocket tens and better and ace-queen suited. That is the answer to this question in this scenario when we know our opponent's range is this incredibly tight. Okay, fine. That's one example. Let's extrapolate a little bit. What if the opponent went all in for more chips with the same range? What if instead of jamming for 16 big blinds, they jam for 30 big blinds? A much bigger all-in. Let's get our cal handy-dandy calculator so we don't screw this up. We have to put in 27.8 more, thir uh, 30 minus 2.2, our initial raise, to win a total of their 30, our 30, small blind and ante. That is uh, 61.5, right? So now we need to have 45.2% equity. 45.2% equity. So if our opponent jammed 30 big blinds instead of only 16, now notice ace-queen suit is not good enough. Ace-king offsuit is, though. And now you probably want, like, jacks are better, if I had to guess. Yeah, jacks are good enough, but remember, tens are not, because so, tens had 42. So in that scenario, exact same range in play. Because you're getting worse pot odds, because your opponent shoved for more chips, you, in turn, should call off tighter, Right? If your opponent shoved for fewer chips, you would in turn call off wider because then we'd only need to win, let's say, 30% of the time or 35% of the time, right? Something else that could change is the opponent's range. Let's say that instead of the opponent shoving this range, they shove much wider because they're crazy. Let's presume they're shoving all sorts of stuff, right? I mean, who knows what they're actually shoving? You, you have to figure out what your opponent's doing by paying attention. That's part of the skill of poker is figuring out what your opponent is doing and adjusting accordingly. Let's presume they're going to shove this range instead. So same exact scenario here, but a different range, right? So instead of the tight range, they're shoving a looser range. Now, you again want to figure out which hands have 41.2% equity because those are our pot odds. We're going back to the 16 big blind example. So now, which hands have that much equity? Well, now you already know like tens was close or tens was close earlier, but against this much wider range, you see tens is absolutely smashing them, 64% equity. Folding tens against this opponent would be ridiculous, right? What about pocket twos? 44% equity. So in this scenario, whenever we're calling with any pair, why? Because the opponent's range is so wide open. It has a lot of hands we are roughly flipping against. And you may say, should we call when we're flipping? And the answer is, yeah. We're actually calling when we're behind because we're getting pot odds. Whenever you are getting pot odds, there's money in the pot, that money is relevant and you should adjust to account for it. Um, okay, so we're calling any pair. What about ace two suited? 45%, pretty good, right? Maybe surprising to you to see ace two suited sometimes does better than pocket twos, even though pocket twos is a pair. Kind of cool, right? Um, what about ace two offsuit? This is probably not going to be quite there. Oh, it is quite there. Barely there. I figured ace two offsuit was close. So fine. We're calling any ace in this scenario. So imagine you were ace at 2.2 big blinds and your opponent goes all in for 16. With that wide range, you're calling with any ace. Most people don't. They fold out too often. And that results in little bits of equity going to the loose aggressive, splashy opponent, which is not good for you. They're stealing your money. Don't let your loose opponents steal your money. What about king seven suited? Pretty close right here. We see it's 42 or 42%. Maybe king six suited is, is break even-ish. No, still good enough. What about king four suited? Oops, notice king four off suit takes away your equity a lot, right? So king four suited is not quite there. So it's gonna be king five suited and better right? Then what about um, king, king eight offsuit maybe? 
Nope, not quite good enough. Knows king five suited has about as much equity against this range as a hand like king nine offsuit does. Kind of cool to see the difference there, right? So we're calling any ace, any pair, king five suited and better, king nine offsuit and better. What about queen 10 suited? Pretty good hand, right? You're going to find these good big suited connectors are, or decent suited connectors are pretty good. What about queen eight suited? I'm going to guess this is not there, but it may be. Nope, not quite there. Queen nine suited probably will be. There you have it, right? So now queen nine suited and better. Probably just queen jack offsuit if I had to guess, right? See, queen jack offsuit is good enough to call. Queen 10 offsuit, eh, okay, barely, right? You see how even after playing around with this calculator for a, a many, many years, I'm still like a little bit off here and there. That's why it's important you study. You have to study a lot. Obviously, if the opponent's range was a little bit tighter, a little bit looser, then you'd have to adjust accordingly, right? And you're going to find that as the range gets wider and wider, it's sometimes a little bit more difficult to act accurately estimate your equity. Everything's easy whenever your opponent has a tight range, right? Um, what about Jack-10 suited? Probably. Yep. What about Jack-10 offsuit? Probably not, right? Okay. What about 10-9 suited? Probably. And I think that's probably going to be the worst suited connector recall. No, so not quite there. All right. So that's our range. We basically found it. In this scenario, we call with all of these hands, all of these hands, all of these hands. Do we decide queen 10 was good? I think we did. Ooh, is jack 9 suited good? We should look at that. Not sure. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. What do we decide queen 10 offsuit was? Yes. Okay. So we're calling. We decided 10 9 suited was not. So that's what you should call with. Now. If you compare this to the range you should call against the tight player, you'll see that you should now call substantially wider, right? And that's because you know your opponent's range is substantially wider. So as the bet you are facing is bigger and bigger and bigger, you should call tighter and tighter and tighter because you're getting worse pot odds. As the bet is smaller and smaller, you should call wider because you're getting better and better pot odds. Also, as your opponent's range gets tighter and tighter, you, in turn, should call it a tighter and tighter range because you are getting, well, you're, you just have less equity in the pot because their range is very strong. And as their range gets wider and wider and wider, you, in turn, should call wider and wider and wider. So download Equalab. is completely free. We'll put a link in the description below, I presume. And um, get in there and play with it, right? If you don't understand these scenarios, you're going to have a really difficult time figuring out what to do in much more difficult post-flop scenarios where you're playing deeper and deeper stacked. So make sure you understand these fundamentals. Understanding the fundamentals is going to go a long way to helping you succeed at poker. So get in there, study hard, and crush the games. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I'm talking to you.